Man, oh man, here we go again. We are back with some behind the scenes, second channel, Theo and Puddin action. Theo and Puddin. That don't sound as good as uh, Shaggy and Scooby. <laughs> Likes on Scoob. No, we ain't no Shaggy and Scooby. We're, yeah, we're solving mysteries. We're solving the mystery on how to build a sweet Model A. And uh, we're getting there. So on this behind the scenes, uh, what we're doing is we're getting ready for this car show in a sense. Meaning there's all kinds of crap that needs done. Travel all needs some love. The van needs some love. The tra trailer needs some love. Uh, all that needs love to be able to make it down there. Of course, the Model A needs all the love it can get to be ready to go. Uh, the frame, I got the call from the uh, blaster and painter, uh, my buddy. Got the call this morning. He said it's gonna be ready for pickup end of tomorrow, so that's good. He's on time. Actually, he told me if I really wanted, I'd come get it at the end of the day. The paint probably be a little soft, and I said I would rather it sit for another day and have more time to cure. So he's way ahead of schedule. He kicked, uh, knocked that out of the park for me. Uh, now, as far as us and what we're getting into today, unfortunately, so on the main channel, let's see. Let me think on this video. Let me think, think, think. Hmm, this video is going to come out before the main channel video of doing all the paint and body on it. So in this video, we're going to do some uh, bed liner, which is different than what we put on the bottom of the actual Model A. Uh, on the Model A, we use some sweet patina product that y'all see in the main channel video. Uh, but I decided I want the bottoms of these fenders coated. Oh, I see old patch right there. Y'all see that sheet metal? If I'm being honest, I don't care about hiding stuff like that. And luckily for us, that's all in pretty good looking paint. So I think what we're gonna have to do on them is gonna be a scuff. Uh, anywhere where there's a little rust or paint flaking, we may scuff a little more than primer. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of looking like a scuffing spray. We're gonna get some of the probably Raptor uh, bed liner that you can get. I know my local paint supply carries it and the O'Reilly's carries it. Uh, I think, maybe, possibly. Somebody in that town that way better have some or I'm gonna put a sketcher somewhere. They don't want it. More or less, I decided uh, we don't want rocks getting caught in our bigger tread pattern. Uh, that right there could hold a decent sized rock and it'll be flinging it at that, at going 85 miles an hour, which if that starts hitting the bottom of the fenders, it's gonna ping it up. We don't want a bunch of pinged fenders on our hot rod. So we just want something a little more durable to protect that as best as possible. And unfortunately, that's a lot of prep work. We're gonna get to that. Right now, uh, we're gonna bounce over to the travel law. I don't even know the sucker's gonna start. Let's go see if she's gonna be good to us. Theodore Rascal Warner, he's been doing good too, by the way. Uh, a lot of y'all interested in him and I'm glad to see it. I know a lot of y'all wanted to name him Rupert. However, uh, guys, I want my girls to be part of him too, even though he favors me more than anyone else in the family. Uh, I think he's more adopted me than we adopted him. He's a good boy. And someone on the last video even said like, he followed you around, you never pet him once. Guys, that day I worked in the shop for like nine hours. If we put in the video how much I pet that dog that day, the video on the second channel instead of being 50 minutes long, would have been three hours and 50 minutes and three hours of it would have been this right here. He gets plenty of love around here. Now I need this travel log to give me plenty of love. Oh yeah, the battery's weak guys, but I charged it up last week. I charged the weak battery last week. Now she's dang near out of gas. Yeah, there's a little in there. So we don't want to run it no more than we have to. And last week, I'm glad me and Slick took this. Cause as I filled it up with gas out there, well, I got to discover that our filler hose is plumb dry rotted and cracked down here. For every gallon you put in, only about three quarters of the gallon makes it in there. So that's something we definitely need to address before we get uh, down to Austin or head to Austin. Uh, but right now, the main thing we're going to address is them tires, they're cracked out on the sidewalls. They're all dry rotted out. Uh, those were very cheap eBay tires. I'm sure they were past their expiration date out of a warehouse whenever I bought them forever ago. And uh, they've been all right, but before we drive, uh, 300 plus miles away we need a different set of tires 
called up my buddy at our local tire place. Uh, he got tires in for me last week, so we're gonna head this head that way to drop that unit off. First, let me show y'all in here real quick, just cause the sheetrock guys were sheetrocking. Well, they sheetrocked last week. Now we got guys in here and they're taping away. Uh, they're gonna get us all mudded out and textured. Uh, like what I'm seeing in here. And these guys work quick cause they ain't been here much longer than an hour in almost every uh, corner joint state you can see. Uh, they're just bugging along, and I think there's maybe three of them. Uh, super impressive how fast they can get this done. Oh, he's on the stilts now up there getting the roof. Y'all see that? Theo, come on. Hey, leave him be. Oh, I think I lied to you. I think there's only two of them knocking all that out. Super crazy how fast they can boogie through that stuff. And the thing about this crew is the work's looking good. Uh, just because someone's fast don't mean they're doing good, but these guys are doing good. Come on. Come here, before we drop that off uh, at the tire place, we are gonna drop off Slick some of his tools. Go check on the old Slickster. Here's the deal. If uh, Derek wasn't bringing me back this way, I'd let you go, but he drives an Escalade and I don't think he wants your stink butt in there, buddy. You know you got a good Puddin's Fab Shop air freshener when it dances like Puddin himself. Travel all still throw down. Sometimes you gotta blow the cobwebs out of her. Whoa, Betsy. Let's take a beautiful cruise here to Tecumseh, Oklahoma. I'm gonna show y'all how to do the old fuel leak special. Hey, there's old Fab Shop. Let me show y'all what you don't want getting gas to look like. As you start going, that right there is what you do not want to see at all. Yeah, gosh darn we're there there's 20 bucks already that right there is right right now a gallon and a half holy man man oh man oh man nobody come around here smoking all right that's all we're doing three gallons worth just enough where i can finish my travels and then hopefully we can fix this sucker shoot we got a little over quarter tank now y'all know what rhymes with quarter tank Ass spank. Woo! That's what you'll get if you line up next to this girl. Special delivery. Me and Slick was saying the other day how fun it'd be to put like a, a turbo on this thing or maybe go to a six liter or just something a little more umph to it than the little 4.8. Hit her with the damned old turbo model. Turbo LS in the travel lot or no? Now's a good time. All right, since we're here, y'all get the, the slick special update. It's kind of been bouncing between customers, including me last week where I had them <laughs> tied up most of the time helping with the paint and body. Like I said, y'all see that. Uh, as far as the she uh y'all should have seen the factory lead seams on these. So he's working towards metal finishing them out. That way you ain't got to have a half inch of body filler or lead. Uh, anyhow, he's about got her tidied up with new quarters and everything else. On one of the second channel videos, y'all seen he was slapping on one of these doors, straightening it out. Well, this 32, he done got it chopped down. So they took a little bit out of the top, uh, as you can see around here. Then he scribed this down because this was back here and he slid that whole thing forward. That way our window line is still matching our drip rail and just a beautiful chop right there. As you can see, he's still got some more to go on it. Got some more leaning to do up front. That's just doing the old flapper 9000 right there. He said, right here's all, all the pieces. So, wood and all. What is that? Two and a half? She's a two and a halfer. Eagle Eye ain't let me down yet, has it? Uh, here we go on this side. Show you the ways you can. There's still a weld seam there, so y'all can see how that was slid forward. Pretty cool to see something when it's chopped well. And then you got to watch the old school cars because you never know exactly what kind of chopping you're getting. You know what I mean? And that that right there is the pretty side on this car. I, don't, I ain't even going to show you the bad side. What is she, about 17 millimeter? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make sure they're even side to side because they, they move a little bit from the inner. So I'm making sure they're... You, you want me to hit you with the old body man special from around here? You're going to see both sides at once. <laughs> that don't matter you gonna be, you can use your eyeball see both sides at once don't worry about that yeah i mean but no I'm, my thing is yeah I, yeah, yeah you, you know it's right you have integrity i was saying like if you think that way then 
you go to put a big tire in it and then one side has a bigger gap than the other side and it's like yeah there's a piece. no i i agree with you and that's why i was just saying the body man special around here yeah, hey slap good. a pretty paint job on it damn that's a good car yeah. you look underneath there it's about to fall in half and it's a death trap but then you look at one of my patina eyes that thing's a piece of crap man i'd drive yours cross country yeah <laughs> we're about to yeah we're about to that's why we gotta get them tires yeah. <laughs> so we ain't on the side of the road cross country yeah. <laughs> so going down to the roundup i was i'm kind of i was a little jealous because slick was gonna drive the wagon and y'all know i've put a little bit of miles but then it went to the interior shop and we're just now getting it buttoned up so he's gonna drive the wagon down to the roundup and i'm like man i want to drive the wagon i'm a little jealous At the same time i don't really trust anyone enough to tow my model a that's a large responsibility i trust it i trust myself enough to drive it to dallas but not through dallas not so through we can switch out if you want well and then i got to thinking i'm like well i don't want to have to drive my truck that ain't fun you know you want to drive something cool and i was like hey dummy you got to travel all you used to tow everything mm -hmm. for three years so that motivated the getting the travel all going again she's it, it needed a little it, it's been neglected yeah. she's been, i was like i bet my license plates out by a month or two try a year. <laughs> a year a whole year we are we are like a month away from a year so 11 months i'm sorry old girl don't be mad at me there's my private helicopter i just bought guys that's how we're gonna start getting around right there hey it's taking off that's cool I wonder if he wants to race for pink slips. He better pack a lunch. Y'all see that? Someone lost some big old dirt fibers out here in the parking lot. <laughs> now looky here. I brought tools to uh, pull my own hubcaps because no one cares about a nice set of steelies and hubcaps more than me. Last thing I want to do is get them back with half the paint missing out there. We need to have old Slicky polish these things up before we go down there again real quick. We got all them popped off let me show you here see all them cracks hopefully you can they're all the way around they're just asking to uh, leave you on the side of the road this whole sidewall starting to go right here she's a little low even pop the hood here battery's only about four years old got her park number now Derek said he has a tester he'll put on there looks like someone hit that and kind of bent it some your screen says drive it more damn it <laughs> it's the only reason my battery went bad is sitting for a year oh yeah she's weak right now probably needs a charge put in it for 11.5 yeah. i charged it last week and I'll drove it, it some so I'll put it on a charger when we've got to get the tires put on it okay yeah i think that's my fault for letting it sit for a year man i feel bad now guys uh Derek gave me a ride home I was sitting there talking to Sir Mordecai, trying to figure out some part numbers for some stuff we need to order. And a, a gentleman pulled up there at the tire shop in a three plus three long bed, almost a faded purple color, little left on a decent aggressive tire, white wagon wheels. And I was looking at it and I was like, man, that thing's a sweet truck. Talking to Sir Mordecai and that guy hopped out and he came around and handed me this and said, I figured I'd catch you around town one of these days. And he was there just to get some tires ordered, I think. Uh, but check out that old Datsun shift knob he uh, handed me there. That thing is pretty sweet, ain't it? We may not have the most fans on the YouTuber, but I guarantee you we got the best fans here at the Putin's Fabrication Shop. Uh, I'm so thankful for you guys. Uh, that that right there just made my day. And of course, I was half busy, so I made sure to tell the guy I appreciate it or whatever. Uh, but I wish I would have thought to pull that camera out of my back pocket and show his truck in the video because it was sweet. Yeah. Right. You can get us a very professional tabletop protector here. And then, at first, we're going to grab uh, one of our rear fenders and kind of take a look and see what all we got going on here. It looks like we got square nuts. We got square nuts holding on our uh, little light thingy, whatever you call this. Whoop. These fenders have definitely seen better days. Them things are plum whooped on. On the back side, we got a very nice smooth fender. You come to that inside, that thing is just rough and beat on and whooped on. It's all right. We still got some 
We still got a good car here. This would be a good day to have one of them smaller, like little two inch DAs to be able to work, work these corners and nooks and crannies. Taking some 80 grit and any of these areas hard to get to, we're gonna have to do them by hand. Which ain't a whole, whole lot, mainly the lips of the fenders. Just gotta be able to get down in there, give it a little scuffing, a little scuff -a rooney a Little 80 grit back scratch. Yeah, all them little dents are uh, showing themselves now, ain't they, as we hit that. Hello. Not interested. I don't need no extended warranty. Call me and then put me on hold. <laughs> that ain't how that works. <laughs> Thank you for holding. That's pretty good scuff and I'm happy with that. Couple areas that went to bare metal there. I'm gonna shoot a little primer on that and let it set up. We don't want that primer down there coming around on our paint. A little dab of that lacquer thinner. Clean that right up. Unfortunately, we got one, well, four fenders, running boards, a front apron, all prep, prep like that. It's already 11 something. The two gentlemen over there doing the sheetrock, they are absolutely kicking butt. And besides knocking the stuff out fast, they're doing good work. And that makes me happy. Uh, it's kind of hard to say that about a long, a lot. Don't mind me walking circles. About a lot of contractors nowadays. Uh, so I seen they had them a microwave and they had them a, a couple, or a microwave in their van. You know what, how about I wipe my hands real quick before I can't focus at all. Long story short, uh, I asked them if they wanted tacos. They're like, nah, they must have seen the Taco Bell in town. Cause I said, no, uh, I said carnitas, pollo, carne asada. Oh yeah, 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 well, they like tacos now. So. I ordered them some taco boy and I'm gonna run and pick it up for them real quick because I appreciate their hard work. Just like that travel all needs some miles put on it before we go out of town. So does this wagon. Now interior, she ain't quite complete yet. As you see, we got a front seat in it now, which is a huge bonus. We still got a little more to do like a kick panel or armrest. We're gonna take this baby on a taco boy run. Kind of interesting is our power steering seems to work when it wants to and it is full so i don't know if it's just air locked or if we got a bad pump or what's going on this old wagon right here is an absolute unit of a driver guys uh it fires right up all the time holds nice good oil pressure uh just goes down the route, road so smooth and as we get the interior buttoned up here, obviously it's nice to drive as well. She goes down the road nice, but I don't think she wants to race that old travel off, not anytime soon. I've had the displeasure and both pleasure behind Well, right now we got the right guys on the job. They're awesome. Yeah, see the interior? Interior's getting there. She is getting there. Looks better with that taco boy in the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> so the back has a back floor piece that covers up all that, that we gotta still get in. But was, I let, let me show you what's cool about these wagons back in the day, cause they're thinking about being able to haul, but you need to work too. And look at these things. They would oh, lay and that, that locks out right there. And then you'd have that cover on the back. So you got that full flat floor to haul with. So you could work out of it. Yeah, I, I, I love it. she is she moves out all right oh man we got a texas dust bowl straight ahead get my wagon dirty go girl go 
So this thing don't really have that much power. It's just a regular old 350. But what helps this thing move along is that overdrive transmission. Your 700 R4, you get them a little bit lower, tighter gear range down on the bottom end. And then having the 373 threes in the rear end makes a big old difference opposed to the 336s that would have come in this car. She'll just buggy along at 80, no problem. 80's where it's happy at. She's a gooder. She's a keeper. She is. Uh, one of my favorite track now, for sure. Got them two rear fenders uh, prepped. Got her scuffed down and taped off. I'm trying, trying to figure out what all we're gonna prep. I need to get these mounted up on the van. In fact, there's a whole list of crap to do to the van before we're ready to drive it to Austin as well. Oh man, oh man. Man, oh man, the list will never end. All right, let me see how this sits up on here. So if we spray the bottom sides of these, we probably want to leave, oh, an inch and a half to two inch. Probably just the width of that tape from this edge straight back. That way all that can still sit flush. Then of course our two brackets on the bottom where they sit, we'll probably want to tape them off. Sand's better when you bite your lip. I had our brackets there with the DA just leading up to them and kind of bare metaled them in a couple spots. So they get primed. Then a little black paint. Hopefully they'll set up in time. By the time we get all this other stuff prepped, uh, if I remember, hopefully, we'll tape off them brackets where they don't get coated. And uh, she's gonna be good to go. Well, running boards and a couple of fenders got a little mud like someone was doing a little off-roading in this rig. I just had alcohol handy, so that's what I've kind of been using to whip my old scrubbing rag here. Don't forget your two inch border on this side. Sound like the police finally coming to get the old Oklahoma wild man. I hear them coming. Whoop! That's all you gotta do is you just, you just duck, hide from them suckers. They won't see you. You wanna know how to actually not get caught by the police, huh? A good first step is you just don't do anything. Hey now, don't do anything to have the police looking for you. Then they won't get you. Well, we're kind of prepped on what we got going there. Theo ain't much help. He looked at me like he took that personal. <laughs> uh, I know that ain't gonna help y'all much. I don't know if well, we can get out this welding helmet. I think our eclipse is starting to kick in here, guys. It's definitely getting darker out here. Derek's here to run me up there so we can get that old travel off. Yeah, it's starting to look weird out here. He looks like he might've been in a scrap or two. Yeah. I don't know. He, he ain't very aggressive, but if it comes down to it, I guarantee you yeah. he can hold his own. Just ask his face. The only thing you gotta worry about with him is uh, getting him out of your butt as you walk. <laughs> I walk, he walks. All right, here we are. She looks a little better not having cracks. It's definitely getting darker out here. Hey there, yeehaw. She uh, definitely rides better with the new tires. I don't know if that's because the quality. I don't know if that's because the old ones were not even amount of air pressure all the way around, but she feels way more gutter going down the road. Has Theo got the welding helmet on? Yeah. Good boy. Does it look weird when you look at the sky? So, so far it's only like, a, it's not even halfway covering it yet. Get the old one-legged glasses here. They advise people to keep, yeah. it looks like, it looks when like tornadoes storms yeah. get ready to move in how it gets all weird looking outside yeah these ain't dark they're not, not dark, dark enough, enough. Oh. Mm, shade oh yeah i know what we need weld let's go darker better oh yeah that's weird okay so let me see then holy cow can you guys see that you can start to see it blocking the sun no y'all can't see deadly it's a valiant effort on my behalf <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Ow! Boy, they really hyped up that uh, eclipse for no more exciting than it just was. Apparently, I looked at it during the peak time, and uh, whatever. <laughs> it was not nothing too great or extraordinary like it was all hyped to be. Well, doing this body work's almost more exciting. And I just love doing this. Here we go. Last fender, final push. This has to sit up on the frame somewhat too, so I'm coming over to this curve. And that's where we're gonna do our tape line, making sure we keep the liner off the, the smooth side. Obviously, we're gonna sit down. All right, we got this. It's gonna be worth it when we have a nice hot rod. You know what? We're very lucky that we found a car that didn't have the dumb uh, spare fender or spares on the side that go into the fenders. Very happy neither one of our sides had. Some, some model A's have it on both sides. Two ugly fenders. We're very fortunate in having no ugly fenders. Ain't no ugly fenders loud around these parts. These bad boys are big enough, they get the, uh, we're gonna wrap them in some plastic here. And D-U-N, I think I'm done, finally, kinda, sorta. I guess I need to scuff some of our uh, rattle can. Crap, I forgot to paint those ones. A little black on that. I come in here earlier looking for some sheetrock screws. Uh, there was one little piece of sheetrock I wasn't happy with over there. <laughs> I'm glad I was looking for those because uh, I remembered I had drop cloths, which I had totally forgot about. Grab that side, Theo. <laughs> Kicked up a little dust, didn't we, boy? Didn't we? Yep. I right, get off there. I'm ready to start positioning some fenders here. First up, one of the big ones. Second up, another big one. Our rear fenders. We almost make them kind of sit up like that. Hey! <laughs> Fender number four! Can't forget to take these suckers off here. Prep work, prep work. I love me some prep work. That may have been the biggest lie I've ever said on the YouTuber, right there. Prep work, prep work. I'd rather be kicked in the nads than to do all this prep work. Now that was a true statement. Now our other one, I'm hoping by the time we get done painting all this or spraying all this, that one will be dried up enough that we can uh, then get it caught up. Yeah. Quick little scuffing on any of our primer spots. I don't know any of this is proper prep work for this though, guys. I'm just uh, firing from the hip. I just assume we can't go wrong with some 80 grit. That's what Slick said anyhow. Whoa, got busted. And then uh, maybe that stuff will stick to the primer as well. Hopefully, hopefully so. All right, Theo, you ain't gonna like this, buddy. Well, we got a wrench in our plan here. I used to have one of the spray guns for the Raptor. Uh, it ain't in my paint cabinet, so I don't know if she just got lost. I ain't used it since I did my truck bed, the international truck. That's been years, a lot of years. Uh, this one for the Sweet Patina N1 product does not screw onto this. Of course, they got different size lids. So the post house is bringing me one of these, one of the guns for these to be able to spray it which means we're at a stand, stand, stand still, stopping point, however you want to say it on this thing. However, I was hoping to have this like ready to spray at noon. When I mean, y'all know I overload my button, I don't get near as much done as I think I can. Uh, and my other thing to do 
was to uh, give the old trailer some maintenance. So let's go see what it's gonna take to uh, work on it. We'll just go see where it's sitting at. I didn't even see what kind of tires we got on here. I just asked for some cheap ones, if I'm being honest. We got the Exploro PT411 ASs. Pet lass. I don't these things, <laughs> who knows? Those are probably the cheapest tire made in that size, period. <laughs> I asked for it. All right, so on this thing, I've never packed the bearings on it. I believe I was told to do that after six months of use, which were well past. I've noticed here lately uh, some of the tires, one of them for sure has low pressure. I don't remember. That one's kind of soft. That one is too. And after the wood aged and dried up some, uh, I was told to coat it with something which I have not done either. So we are getting ready to go down to Austin. Part of that is towing the Model A and part of towing the Model A involves this trailer and I'd prefer not to be doing bearings on the side of the road. But we can either drag it up here or we can just bring tools down here. Feels pretty nice. Got a little bit of shade over there. We might just take the fight to the trailer and leave it in its spot. Is that my good boy? Is that my buddy old pal? That's my good boy. Just gonna get loaded up with the few select tools here. Some type of impact setup. Get the lug nuts off. What else we need? Probably a speed wrench. Good set of side cutters. A little tapping device. And perhaps a Pop County pry bar. Flat headed screwdriver. Tap, 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 pop, pull. I think that's everything. Now you know what they say, no glove, no love. Mm, and we're dealing with grease, probably need some grease. I don't know what flavor they got, but here's what I got. Much other than that, if we had a jack, we'll have a pretty decent start down there. Found one. Hi-ho, hi-ho, come on, Theo. He wasn't coming, then he was running. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. We're gonna work outside because it feels kind of nice. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. Yeah. 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 Make it rain some dirt and make it rain in this hole. Something about a trailer axle just reminds me of my old house. Yeah, that's where I come from. Oh, these say like easy lube. So, do I just need to grease this sucker? Or do I need to pack the bearings? We're just gonna pull a cap since we're here. Yep, she's got some play in her. All right, y'all listen. Yep, she's flopping. I'll be honest though, I don't know what the heck we got going on here. Let's just pull off here. Maybe. Yep, she's the quick release feature. Learning something new today. So that's just kind of spring loaded to bite around that big nut. Oh yeah, that sucker's finger loose there. If we want to drop your bearing right in the dirt, Get a bunch of rocks and crap stuck to it. That'll help what we're trying to accomplish here of making sure we don't lose a bearing. Yeah, I don't know. This one looks all right. Feels good. Feels like it's got plenty of lubrication in there. If I'm being honest, I think we're good. I'm gonna put that back on. I'm gonna put us a dollop of new stuff in there. And we're just gonna put her back together. Get out from underneath there. We ain't got jack stands, dummy. If it goes down, you're in trouble. You ain't a dummy, he's a smart boy, I know it. All right. There you go, come on. And just snug that down by finger till that slack's gone right there. This sucker only goes on one way. It's got a flat side on her little spindle there. Whatever you'd call that. So somehow or another, the sucker's just gonna pop on here. Mm. Mm. It's gonna pop on there somehow or another. <laughs> it's gonna pop on there. I'm sure this has to be indexed a certain way 
for all that to be happy. Problem is, I'd rather have proper tension. So, what do we do in this situation? We back that off, we get our slack back. And I don't want slack back. <clears throat> About to drill a damn hole through that thing. Pop a cotter pin in it. <clears throat> What's going on here? Two of these want to land on the corner. Those are landing on the corner. These are landing on the flat side. I'd imagine it should be able to go on there like that. It will. Just need a little persuasion. All right, all that back together. I think what we're gonna do is jack all these up and kind of shake them and give them the shake test. There's one thing I'm talented at that's definitely making a mess on jobs like this. You need a guaranteed mess, I'm your guy. We'll take it. Yeah, this side's worse than that one. That's interesting. That drum for no longer or older than it is. No longer than it's been on this trailer. She's rusted pretty good. Enough that it's cracking off a layer even. Quick initial look. This stuff is dirtier than the other one. It does have a cotter pin on this one. Just gonna pull her cotter pin. Snug that up till we can get that through a hole again, which is right there. Don't worry about them brakes. You pull this sucker long enough, that'll self-clearance. I just want to make sure that it ain't got no slop in it like that. She just needed a little bit. I see no sense in pulling that apart. We'll just make sure that's uh, nice and snugged up. Get our spider webs out of there. Nothing but the finest of quality of service around here. If y'all heard that, but after I said that, Theo ain't been around very long. But I said, only the finest quality service around here. And he said, <sighs> like, he's even, he don't believe it. It hurts my feelings, dude. This. All right. We're not that sensitive. We'll, we'll be okay, whether you heavy breathe at us or not. Now, this thing is some type of, yep, that's easy enough. Honestly. It's just good to put eyes on this stuff, guys. A little preventative maintenance. But do I think we would have had a problem with what I've seen so far? Not for a long time to come, I don't. Everything's lubed up very well. And some bearings have just settled from being on the road, from being brand new. Theo could sleep through a Metallica concert during a damn earthquake and not be bothered. I'm ripping that impact. He's just underneath there snoozing. I don't even know if y'all can see him. She don't shake no more. Pop that on. We'll give her a few squirts of grease since we're here. Pop that old quick access plug right back on. And let's see if we can find our PSI for our tires. 50 PSI. All right. Let's see where we're sitting at here. About 33. I'm going to set them all about 45 PSI here. Once we get her to 45, let's see what this front one is. I done jacked up the other side a minute ago, guys. And kind of give those two over there the shake test. And each one of them, same thing. A little bit of slop. And same thing. The one more rear with the brake is looser than the front one. She's about 36 PSI. Go time. Everything in this one looked good. All right. Both tires aired up. That about does her for as far as her little axle servicing. I do have some used uh, motor oil here. And I ain't gonna lie to you, she does have a little gasoline mix in her. And by a little, I mean, uh, I can smell it. There's enough that it got in there. So I don't know if that's good or bad for what we're trying to accomplish here. But 
We're gonna sweep off the trailer and try it anyhow. If I'm being honest, I don't really get why you seal the top because it ain't gonna seal the bottom and you're gonna get more, more moisture on the, or just as much moisture on the bottom side. So if it's gonna rot, ain't it gonna rot no matter what? I guess if you seal it from the top, it makes it look prettier. I don't know. I just know we're gonna pour some out and see what happens. It ain't very thick. There may be more gas in that than I thought. Well, we didn't really waste much. Uh, it's pretty well just soaking in. So I guess we're just gonna have to coat the whole thing. Give her a nice rustic look here. I mean, I ain't mad about how it looks. Got plenty of this using motor oil, so it's a cheap enough way to do it. I've heard of people using diesel. Gas kind of diluting the oil that I had would kind of help it to be able to soak in and not be so thick. I can hear the environmentalists freaking out now. Well, what do you do here, though? Would you go get proper sealer that's probably oil-based as well and you're gonna pour it on your trailer and whatever's gonna spill is gonna spill. Luckily, we ain't losing a whole lot. Most of it's going right into the board and soaking right up. As I move forward, I got a lot more generous with it, making sure it was coating nice and thick, even letting it have some soak time before I'd uh, maybe even coat it again and smear it around. This old wood's just soaking all right up. Some danged old, old used motor oil. Nothing but the top of the line around here, baby. Just give that baby a little even lather there. All right, another nice and spread there. I'm gonna let this soak for a few minutes and a large part of it will just soak right on in here, guys. Get her down deep in the wood. Get in there nice and deep like, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. All right, guys, finished doing that. All that oil got on our fender, so I just kind of wiped it and smeared it around. Made her shiny, almost like some patina sauce. This is old Puddin's patina sauce right here. A little rust, rust protection against all this rust we got coming where she's getting all chipped up. Our product's a dual purpose product. You'll seal that wood and you'll protect that metal. Now my product probably ain't as good as the sweet patina, patina sauce, okay? And I guarantee you my hand cleaners that I don't have or not as good as these hand cleaners here by Sweet Patina. These are the TKO knockout, all right? These babies knock out the others in the competition. It's just a ka ka all right? It's not even a fight. These things are awesome. Uh, SweetPatina.com, use the old promo code on the screen if you wanna get you some. Now, luckily during our trailer maintenance, we have plenty of time for our gun to get delivered. Let's see if this is it. All right, I bet we two-hand this thing and just get the damn box open, huh? How's that? Dang, comes in one of them bags like the old deli chicken from the Sam's Club. Or the rotisserie chicken, y'all know what I mean. Yep, looks like it'll fit. All right, let's see, let's see here. Fill it with eight ounces of the activator. Shake it, shoot it. All right, that seems easy enough. Oh, this is a uh, leaked a little, sticky. Good thing I still had that hand cleaning wipe, the same one, just sitting on top of the toolbox. And I am gonna shake this first as well before we add our activator or whatever it is. Hardener, let's get the old pop top. Pop! I do like the little measuring cup that comes with that. Get our eight ounces in here. It says shake well for at least two minutes. They don't know I got the old cheater though, do they? We gonna turn two minutes to about 30 seconds. and slow maybe sweet talk it a little bit hey you want to mix it here have a little shake oh yeah we are uh, ready for a little spray in action we gonna start over here with a little test panel uh, as you can see i did get our other running board taped off ready to play as well that's as good as the feel as i need i guess
rocking the boat. Think we're due for a reload. That's good because we're empty. That's the last of our product there. Lay them down before the wind gets them. All right, that stuff. So we did the N1 coating from the sweet patina. This is the Raptor. Uh, the N1 was easier to spray as far as I felt like that gun, I needed a regulator where the N1, I did not. I could control it more in the gun. I just felt like overall I had more control of spraying the N1. I felt like it sprayed better as far as being able to uh, get good coverage where I was spraying, where this was more psh, blasting it in one certain area. I wasn't getting like a wide coverage again, probably too much air pressure, but that thing's a, she's a hair trigger. You just barely crack it and you're you're giving her all she's got. Uh, now y'all know I'm biased to the sweet patina, but hey, get away from that. Come here if the uh if the raptor stuff sprayed better i promise you i would have just told you i was curious to see which one uh now with my capabilities or the lack thereof with the paint and body if you gave me the choice of which one i would uh, voluntarily spray or put on my ride uh sorry raptor i'm going with the n1 and not just because it's my buddies uh more because i felt like i was getting a better spray more even coating, just more control overall. Now what I don't know is how they compare in pricing. Sweetpatina.com right here. Let's see. The kit is 240 to 245, depending on something. So you use my promo code, save your 10% there, knock off 24 bucks. You're down around 225, then tax. Now the Raptor kit is going to be hard to say guys because I do get a discount because I use them a lot. That Raptor kit cost me about a buck seventy-five, and then the gun was thirty-five. So you're about two ten there, and that's minus tax as well. So really, you're going to be up, you know, two thirty-ish. I'd say they're probably within by the time you break it all down, probably twenty twenty-five bucks of each other. So it's not like you get a massive savings by using one or the other. Uh, for me the raptor stuff is cheaper than going through his website because of my discount with the parts house from always using them but for you guys i don't know it may be the same price or more expensive to go with that stuff just depends on what it costs you and i'm sure someone sells that online for around comparable prices as well sometimes you just need a snack and your hands are dirty now that stuff they sell is just a bed liner his is like a bed liner and he his has uh, temperature control, uh, sound control. It's kind of a three-in-one type product, I do believe. Do all your own research. Uh, as far as which one would I want to spray again, definitely the N1. Now all this stuff is looking pretty good though as it's drying. I did go way thicker on our fenders, which we're trying to protect, than what I did do on our running boards. As it dries out, uh, I'm sure it'll just look better and better, which is exactly what his product did on the bottom side. Now that it's full dried out and cured, it's nice and perfectly even as far as the finish and everything goes. Uh, underneath here just looks awesome. And you can definitely tell there is some sound dampening going on now. Before with that, you would have got more of a dung, 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 little echo on there. Well, now you just kind of get a knock, knock, knock. Who's there? I don't know. Some sound dampening, some temperature control, some N1 coating by the sweet patina. Now we need to let this stuff rest some, but I'm kind of nervous. I think I messed up where our tail lights go. I forgot to uh, take that off specifically. So I just wanted to make sure we didn't have bed liner come through and actually get on our paint and that looks fine. And this one here, we can actually see where it was coming through. Yeah, it got a little thicker on that one. But again, all of that is fine. It's within uh, where our tail light housing will go. 
We just don't want that on our uh, actual paint out there. Oh, she's setting up. We'll give her a little bit more time to kind of tack up there before we start peeling that paint. Uh, so as we're letting it do that, uh, we can go over and them sheetrock guys left earlier when I was down there uh, piddling on the trailer. Go have a little look see over here and see what's going on, Shane. Just follow the white footprints. Dang! They actually cleaned up pretty good. Kind of surprises me. Hello! Hello! We need some sound control in here. I'm about to coat these walls with the N1 sweet patina coating. Them two guys, they just knocked it out today. Uh, all the tape joints, they hit them real quick. Gave it time to set up. Uh, kind of scuffed them down. Hit them with the second coat. Gave that time to set up. And then they went through and they did the, the little trial texture real quick. Looks good. Good enough for our office. Good enough for a gym over there. Them guys, they were getting after it. I don't see nothing I ain't happy with yet. Uh, it didn't take long of walking into my house when we built it to start pointing out stuff I wasn't happy with. Of course, I didn't use the same sheetrock, guys. I wish the crew that uh, did this had done my house after seeing some of their work here. All right, let's go look at the Sir Mordecai suite. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be uptown and spoiled in here. These look a lot better. This morning, I got up here and bust this sheetrock off uh because our framing our wood frame was over here the metal frame of the building was over here offset about three eighths of an inch so when they screwed that sheetrock to that of course it kicked it at a terrible angle uh so i took that off and then adam had some shims so he came by and uh, shimmed that out that way our window was a lot straighter and of course it created a gap over here but they seem to fill it up good it looks nice Definitely looks better than what it would have been if uh, it was just left how it was. Hmm, that is cracking out already. And they left me some gaps on this window. And I'm sure if we wanted to get super duper picky, which some of y'all are gonna tell me, well, you should get super picky. But I don't know, guys, my standards for out here in the shop add-on uh, is just lower and not in a give me whatever you want type of way. But it's a shop add-on and I mean Mortz is gonna live in here you know pretty low standards so <laughs> no but for real uh, I don't know I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing the house on the other hand you know when that all was going on whew, we're not even gonna get back on that subject the sheetrock is I'd say ten times better than the crap they did over there so uh, if I go through and see those two couple little things that could probably be fine-tuned by painters before it gets painted I'm not too worried. I reckon around these other windows are all pretty good And I, I don't know. I don't know if they silicone them when they go to paint or not But there's your update on the shop add-on. We are sheetrocked taped and mudded You staying up there waiting for Mortsky or are you gonna come down here with me? Dad, dad, I'm scared of stairs dad. Good boy. Let the yeah. Dog, let the dogs peel. Okay. No, get them dogs out of here. Only one dog allowed. Theodore. Uh, there's a piece of tape on this side we need. I'm good. Perfect edge. Down. Don't let it whoop you. The perfect tape line. That stuff does peel nice. I'll give that Raptor liner that. She's still a, a little soft, so we're not letting it full set up here. Did you get on your hands? Touching. They will now be black. Okay. You'll now have bed liner fingers. Oh, this one set up a little too much. Oh man, I forgot to trim this side. What a rookie. <laughs> send, send the Model A to the crusher. Then forgot to <laughs> trim the tape. Dang it. We're going to go find a new car and start over. The strategy is pull the tape and don't tear up my fender. End of the day. Been out here busting tail all day and I finally just now get some help. Oh. Ah. Oh, that it takes so long to prep this crap and then you just get to rip it all off. Mm -hmm. Tape lines work 
worked out pretty good. Everything's feeling good. Just setting up a little more here. We're not gonna give it the knock test till the morning. Oh! Scratch the pipe! About better whoop now. Rip it, baby, rip it. Rip it, rip it. Yeah. Hut two, three, four. We need some we need some faster pillars. There's tape on this end. Mm -hmm. Baby, did you see the solar eclipse thingy earlier? No, not really. Yeah, it's pretty disappointing, huh? Yeah. I was expecting full and, darkness. And um uh, Midwest City, it was pitch black. That's a lie. Nope. Because my therapist her Yeah, husband, it's normal is like almost pitch black too. Because my she showed us the video and I had uh, I think they I think they edited it. It huh? ain't that far from us. How come it's pitch black there but not here? Don't make no sense. I call baloney. All right, we are peeled. Uh, yep, the more it dries, the more she uh, kind of sets even. That's gonna be some protection. She ain't the full knock test, but we'll give it the finger dabble test. Whack it up, baby. All right, that'll give it the whack test. They showed up at the right time to help for real. May not seem like it, but having an extra couple of hands on peeling that tape just saved me probably 15, 20 minutes. We were able to get her done in about five minutes. All right, guys, that is it. I ain't cleaning up no more. It's probably 6.30 plus in the evening. I am. We got, I don't know, we got stuff done that had to be done. I can't necessarily say we got a lot done because the prep on all this was just so time consuming. Of course, then spraying it and unpeeling it is like, boom, boom, you just get her knocked out. Now, like I said, on these, we didn't go as thick. Yeah, I think that stuff's gonna make a difference. This part has the rubber on the other side. That's why it's so quiet. That's just sheet metal. It seems to be helping with that. It's definitely gonna protect. And our fenders up in this area where the rocks should throw more, uh, I gave it a little extra attention, a little extra love, trying to accomplish our goal of protecting the fenders from the rocks pinging. Why are you so red? Thank you. It's just water. Yeah. Uh, our rear fenders, I done carried them over here off to the side. Same thing, they're so small, I just layered that stuff on thick. And that stuff is thick enough that a lot of them little previous pings and the patches kind of disappeared and all that stuff. So I think we're sitting good there. We're sitting good with our add-on with all the sheetrock stuff being done. Uh, trailer is ready to tow to Austin. And the travel has got a new set of tires so we ain't gonna worry about popping them. Uh, there's still a ton of side quests to do before we leave. We're gonna get on the Model A tomorrow. I'm gonna be going to pick up the chassis and then we'll be starting assembly and all that. Uh, but the other side quest of getting the van ready, the travel all maintenance done, Everything else we need to do is going to have to happen the first of next week before we actually go to Austin. Uh, so, I reckon that's it. And, yeah, we could get used to some help in here, couldn't we? Mm-hmm. You ain't ever over here helping. Oh, I come in here once a little bit. Once in a blue moon. Once in a solar eclipse. Guys, I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Facebook. And also, sitting in a butt won't finish your project. Sitting on your butt won't finish your project. I'm on the Patreon, uh, puddingsfabshop.com for that good quality merchandise. We are not releasing any more until after we get back from the Austin. And uh, April 19th and 20th, Lone Star Roundup, Austin, Texas. Be sure to come see us. Me, Slick, uh, Sir Mordecus, Bowling Brothers, Sweet Patina, all kinds of good people gonna be there, guys, so come see us. And other than that, I will see you guys next time. However, do not forget, Sitting on your butt won't finish your project. You want to race me on your mark? Go! Woo! Hot damn, there's so much bs -ery. We had to start a whole channel for all the extras. Be sure to go check out Puddin's Fab Shop if you ain't seen that baby yet. Come on!